Good morning. Yes, it is still morning. I had to check just to make sure. Mm -hmm. It is morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. You may have noticed that I'm in my kitchen today. My office was a little like, had a little issue with my office this morning. One of my jerk of a cats. <laughs> Knocked over, I had a giant urn full of a beautiful, I can't remember what kind of plant it is, but it's one that I take in and out. When it gets cold, bring it inside, set it up, blah, blah. but it's set up on a shelf that's like high enough that they can't get to it. Um, and there's lots of stuff around, anyway. Yep, and it's a super heavy one. It's like full, full of dirt. Like there's no way that the cat should be able to like get that thing off the shelf. And there they did. So I've got a huge mess over there in my office back there that I'm just pretending doesn't exist right now because I don't have time. I don't have time. Oh, so annoying. This is why we can't have nice things because my cats get into my plants. I literally bought a thing from Ikea that like, where you close the door and you put the plants inside the cabinet. And like, so my plants are all in a cabinet. <laughs> Stupid cats. I love them so much, but. Mm. 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 Anyway, so that's why I'm in my kitchen because I can't even with my office right now. Can't even. Oh. Anywho. All right. Here we are. 11 a.m. Thank you for joining me an hour early. Normally I'm here at uh, noon, but there's uh, something else I'm doing at noon today. So here I am at 11. My time, of course. Eastern time, Toronto time. So, hey. Uh, <laughs> hey, Christina. I know, right? Cats. Oh. Um, guess what? <laughs> my name is uh, Dr. Shannon Coates. And I am, uh, my pronouns are she and they or she, her, they, them, and I am grateful to live and work on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabeweke, the Mississauga, and the Wendake Miyawatsu peoples here about 45 minutes to an hour north of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. And um, as you know, if you have been with me for a while, if you have followed for a while, this is, uh, these are my Monday, uh, no, Friday, these are Friday live office hours where um, I like to talk a little bit about, um, I have live office hours on Mondays and Fridays, and uh, on, on Fridays I'd like to talk a little bit more about sort of philosophical things around teaching and around, um, you know, ways that we teach and, uh, and instructional uh, theory and things like that. So those are the things that I like to talk about on Fridays, and on Mondays I like to talk about, like, specific things. So this coming Monday I'm actually going to talk about... Um, on, on, at nine o'clock on Monday, I'm going to talk about uh, the concept of flow and um, what it is and also exercises uh, to um, work with flow in the singing voice. So I'm gonna talk about that on Monday if you're interested. Um, also, I think it's, I think there should be something, not on Instagram, but on Facebook, there should be something somewhere talking uh, like with my new website, which, I did I didn't do like a big old like formal launch of it, but it is live now. So if you um if you're in Um, so yeah, you can go there. And if you go to my old website, it just redirects to my new one anyway. So you can't get to my old one anyway. So good luck. But uh, so the interesting thing about the new website is that it has or one of the very many interesting things about the new website is that it has um, an events calendar. And so on that events calendar, you can click there to see when, um, you know, when, when I'm doing stuff. And uh, so that the, if you click on the events calendar, it actually has all my live office hours in there too. What? So you can like keep track. What? Okay. Enough of that. That website has is like... Um, like 14, 15 months in the making. Like we started it August 2020. Uh, yeah, we started in August 2020. So it's been a whole long thing. All right. 
here we are. We're talking today about some philosophical ideas around teaching. So something that I wanted to, something that came out of the practicum that I, that, that finished last week, but that we're still kind of, you know, still carrying on a little bit, but the practicum that we did last week, which was a contemporary voice practicum, and there were uh, nine voice teachers from all over uh, at that. And um, one of the things that came out of that um, that we talked about a little bit was the use of language and the idea, I mean, we always talk about language in practicums, but the idea of um, imposing our experience of, as voice teachers, imposing our experience of a technical exercise or a specific kind of coordination or even um, uh, a piece of music, imposing our experience of it on the student. And we do this in really subtle ways and we don't do this, um, uh, you know, we often do this as a way of comforting or supporting the student where we say things like, oh, this is a really hard run. Or I know this exercise is, this, this coordination is really tricky to get. Or there's a, you know, like I, I find um, you might crack in this spot or the transition here is really tricky, or you're gonna find this part hard, or the breath, getting your breath under you in this part is really challenging. Where we impose this thing, we impose our experience, and it may not, not just be our personal experience, it may also be our experience of, you know, having worked on that piece with a million different people, or, uh, you know, whatever it is. It may be our experience from having you know, experientially working with students on something. Um, and but we but there's a really fine line there between imposing our experience and creating a barrier and creating a, uh, an expectation, uh, like creating an expectation that gives a barrier to the learning experience. There's a fine line between that and um, setting up uh, an expectation of being able uh, uh, of, of learning. So we do, we say things like, oh, that's a really, you know, that's a really hard passage or um, most people run out of air on this spot or watch out because you're going to crack in this area or that's a really, this is a really hard exercise. Um, or whatever it is, right? We say things like that because we're looking, we're not, we're not trying to create a barrier to learning, obviously, but um, we say those things because we want to, um, uh, you know, we want to sort of warn of the pitfalls, right? We, we know that this is going to be a challenging thing and, or at least it has been in our experience and it has been with other students, perhaps. And so we know that that may be challenging. And so we kind of put that into the student so we impose our experience of whatever it is we're working on onto the student and i just wanted to kind of suggest a few other ways to go about creating a learning experience versus cre or creating an expectation of learning or an expectation of a challenge versus creating an expectation that sets up a barrier, right? This apprehension where we think something is hard uh, or the students may think something is hard because we've told them it is. Ah! So we want to just be careful because sometimes we tell a student something's hard and then it becomes hard because we've told them it is, right? <laughs> Whereas if we had worked with them in a way for in an exploratory, exploratory way, in a way, uh, in a more fun way, perhaps, or in uh, a more inquisitive, student-led way, we may, they may not have had that same experience. They may have experienced it as, perhaps they may still experience something as hard or challenging, but in a, not in a, oh, shoot, this is going to be hard, but in a, ooh, that was interesting way. So here are, some, here are some thoughts about this. When you're introducing repertoire or when someone's talking to you about repertoire, when you know that there's something challenging in that repertoire, say for example, a challenging transition registration transition, for example, or say a challenging uh, phrase that requires a specific kind of breath um, coordination, um, or something that requires, you know, a specific kind of vowel shaping, or 
something where there's a run that requires a really uh, coordinated level of agility to, to create that run. Um, when we're introducing repertoire like that, um, working, first of all, in those, in those areas from mimicry, so we're listening and then we're, uh, you know, listen a couple of times to experts who already can, who are already doing that in an ease-filled way. So we're listening and getting the sound of the ease in our ears. Um, something in the Western classical realm that really comes to mind uh, uh, in this is um, Silent Noon, the Vaughn Williams piece, uh, art song, which has this incredible, like, your hands lie open in the something grass. Like that opening phrase is this massive spinning of breath. It requires this incredibly co well-coordinated, sophisticated coordination of breath release in order to sing that opening phrase well and, and a bunch of other phrases in that song. So that's something that comes to mind as a song where we could introduce that song as, okay, so the breathing in this one is really hard, so we gotta work on the breathing, right? We can introduce that song that way, or we can introduce the song by listening to three or four professional singers singing that opening phrase with ease and beauty and, and get the, the sensation and the feeling of the, of the ease of it in our ears to start with so that our expectation of the phrase is that it's that there's ease and coordination and uh, beauty in in and and you know this we already have the expectation of this coordination in our ear and then work on the phrase you know in a specific way so maybe we do it first with a tongue trail and maybe we do it first with you know vroom, or however to get the, that same coordination in our own bodies without ever saying this is a really hard phrase to sing because it's going, you know, you're going to run out of air. So without ever suggesting that, we can then have this learning experience um, uh, without having and, and set up the learning challenge in a in a in a um, you know in a in a in a fun experimental challenge kind of way rather than the barrier kind of way where this is going to be really hard. So this isn't gonna, you know, we're, it's gonna be really hard. So that's that's an example for that's an example in repertoire. When we're working on technical exercises or we're working on coordination, it's so easy for us sometimes to say when they're when when a student is working on something and they're not quite getting it or you know the coordination isn't there yet and that's fine. Um, it's so easy for us to say, I know, eh? This is such a hard exercise or. This is, you know, this is so hard to do. It's so, it's so easy for us to kind of jump into that. Oh, I forgot to say happy Thanksgiving to um, the folks in, in the States who may be here. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you have time to reflect and I hope that you have time to um, spend with family if that is what you would like to do, whether it is your, your uh, uh, blood family or your chosen family. And I hope that you have, um, like I said, time to reflect and enjoy love and peace. Also... <laughs> It's not Thanksgiving here. Yay! <laughs> we have Thanksgiving in October. <laughs> like, like thinking people. <laughs> so we don't have to run like pell-mell through that, <laughs> through Thanksgiving in, a, uh, in November right into Christmas, right? <laughs> we get a little bit of time between so we can properly celebrate. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, Americans. Uh, right. So what we're... we're uh, uh, what we may do in an exercise, like I said, is we may we may sort of default into that support for the student where we're saying, I know it's a really hard exercise, eh? Or it's really, that's a real challenge to get that coordination down. Rather than, and, and what it, when you feel the need, when, when that is the, you know, when that's your instinct, ask yourself or stop yourself and see if you can say something like, where are the challenges in this exercise for you? Because it is entirely possible that the student is not experiencing the challenge in the way that you think they are, or that they're not experiencing the level of difficulty that you experience or that you think they are. 
So it's entirely possible that by saying to them, yes, this is a really hard exercise, or this is a really, you know, that it's, it's a really hard coordination to get, it's entirely possible by saying that to the student, we're actually imposing our experience of it on the student, on the singer, rather than, and creating a barrier there, a learning barrier there. So what we can do instead is say, What's challenging in this for you? What do you feel is, um, I'm just going to check here on Facebook to see. Oh my gosh, yes, see, I can't see the comments. Okay, there are some comments there. Hi, Chantal, I'll take a look in a minute. Um, what do we feel, uh, what do you feel, what is challenging for you in this? Or do you find this challenging? Are you finding this challenging? If so, what specifically is challenging for you? And they may say something that is revelatory. Um, you know, they may say something like, uh, it just feels like my stomach is really locked. And like, maybe that hadn't even occurred to you that that's what, that's where the challenge was in this for them. And maybe you would never have figured that out, right? Like maybe you would never have figured out the key for them to be able to accomplish this coordination um, if you hadn't asked or if you had imposed what you experienced in the challenge, what, what your experience of the exercise or, or um, challenge was. Um, yeah, I love this. I try to avoid. Yeah, I know. It's so it's tricky, right, Chantel? Like it's really tricky because we do. And also we're supportive of our students. We're trying to be so supportive and say like and empathetic, right? We're like, I know, right? This is so it's this is so tricky <laughs> or it's a real challenge to do this or this is such a hard exercise or it's such a hard song. Um, and then, uh, yes, we're trying. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But we end up creating an unintended barrier. Exactly right. Yeah. And then, yes, what are the challenges for you in this is is and that that comes back to our student led learning as well. That comes back to um, where rather than um, my experience being the predictor of what's going to happen in that student, their experience actually comes to the fore and we're responding to their experience of what's happening rather than giving my experience as the, like I said, as the predictor. And, and like Chantel said, unintentionally creating these barriers to learning. So something to just consider over the weekend and, you know, as you go into next week, just something to consider what are the ways that my my empathy to my student with my students and my desire to have sorry on facebook i know my i gotta figure i can't figure out how my laptop why the white balance goes crazy on it but anyway uh, how what are the ways that my empathy for and with my student uh, are getting in the way and my desire to support the student are kind of getting in the way of truly uh, creating that student-led learning um, environment that I want to create in the studio and in what ways might I be imposing my experience onto the student and unintentionally creating some some learning barriers there uh, so something to consider so like I said if that if the phrase you know this is hard or you know uh, the desire to kind of warn a student about something comes up maybe figure out a different way to do that. And in repertoire, a terrific way, like I said, when you're working on repertoire, a terrific way to introduce um, challenging repertoire um, is to have intentional listening. So any challenging repertoire is to have intentional listening where you're listening to the folks who make it sound easy. You wanna listen to those and you wanna have that sound in your ear and you wanna have that, um, uh, deeper coordination in your ear and in your body. You want your body to be responding to that rather than the student responding to, okay, this is going to be really challenging because of the way the breath works here. Or, you know, you're going to be, um, oh, thank you, Chantel. <laughs> you're going to be, it's going to be really challenging because of the, you know, this, this, this run is really hard. And sometimes students come to you, so, okay, here's the little flip side on this too. Sometimes students will come and say, so, you know, I, I worked on a lot, of, a lot, a lot of rejoices with, um, with folks, rejoice from uh, the Messiah, from Handel's Messiah. Uh, and it's the one that has, you know, it has a, has a bunch of different runs in there. And uh, they can be challenging for sure. 
For sure. And so sometimes singers, so usually the folks who are singing something like Rejoice, um, they have a pretty good idea already of what is challenging and what isn't. So they make they come into the studio and they may say something like, this run is killing me, it's so hard. Or in a contemporary sense, they may come into the studio and say, um, the belt in this song is like so hard and like, it's just so hard. So how do we move, how do we move that experience, which is a barrier, right? That is a barrier. When we consider something hard, there, it's a, or sorry, I shouldn't say it is. It can be a real barrier to learning when we consider something hard. So how do we change that over? Something that we might want to do in that instance, like I said, is to, or something that is really useful, is again, to listen to people who make it sound easy. So take a listen to, you know, the cast recording and two or three other recordings somewhere if you've got them. Um, take, it, take a listen to uh, several different artists singing whatever it is that you're listening to and listen very specifically to small chunks and especially the chunks of whatever it is you're listening to that or whatever it is you're working on that are challenging i mean this isn't about this isn't about gaslighting right this isn't about saying oh no that's not hard it's not about that (laughs) or oh no that's you know you're crazy that doesn't that doesn't sound hard at all that's not what this is about this isn't about that this is definitely about acknowledging that something is challenging but in a way Uh, where we aren't taking on the barrier that comes along with something being hard or with how we consider something being hard. Okay, and we can, like I said, we can challenge that by listening. One terrific way to challenge that is to listen to the folks who are doing it who make it sound easy. So then you can say, okay, they're beautifully coordinated. Let's start to get that sound in our ear and let's start to figure out um, in our own bodies what that coordination feels like and looks like. Um, yes. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to end it there. Look at that. Relatively short live office hours today. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, as I said before, if you're, um, you know, if you're poking around on the internet and you would like to, and you're interested, take a look at my new website. Uh, there is some information there too about the undegree, which is coming in 2022. And, um, you know, bios and all that stuff. So take a look. It is uh, Dr. Shannon Coates, so Dr. Shannon Coates. And that's where I'm going to end it today. Have a terrific weekend. And if you are celebrating, happy Thanksgiving. Take care.